Let's begin with an experiment. I'll show you two scenes. The first one from Martin Scorsese's The Irishman. The second from the first episode of Netflix's hit series Dark. Now don't worry. No no spoilers. This cocksucker shows up at a meeting 15 minutes late. We're in fucking shorts. Go wear shorts to a meeting. Nobody. That's right. Nobody. I'm not showing appreciation. It's not me. According to some people. No, I know it's not you. Some people. Some people say I'm not showing appreciation. Well then fuck them. Solche Versammlungen sind echt was für Spaß diesmal. Sowas gehört abgeschafft. So the experiment here is could you guess which one of these scenes has a continuity error and really what is a continuity error it's a mistake in consistency like a shirt that mysteriously dries off or a glass of water that magically vanishes or a candle that gets lit out of nowhere these errors can seem annoying but Really? Do they even matter? So, did you guess which scene had a continuity error? Chances are that if you watched it in one go, it's highly unlikely you did. And this really speaks for why continuity errors really don't matter in the first place. Of course, it can break immersion even in films with high production. But these are extremely rare and if you do look closely you will find hundreds of them in any regular film even in blockbusters with millions of dollars to spare so why do editors filmmakers and even audiences miss them except for these idiots to better understand this i'll try to explain through a film editor's perspective because well i believe editing is a vital element in continuity and i'm a film editor now flawless editing keeps audiences engaged in a film and to better achieve this legendary film editor Walter Murch famously created his six rules for maintaining perfect continuity in editing now it is not imperative that all six of these rules should be followed at the same time because it's not possible so he assigned certain percentages to prioritize these rules the rules with the lowest percentages can be eliminated and thus broken from the bottom up as long as the top rules are followed but Why all these rules are for continuity won't it be better to follow all of them for the perfect experience why is it okay to break say rule 6 as long as we have rules 1 through 5 why break any rule when it breaks continuity itself the answer to this why is the answer to our question let's briefly examine these rules 3D space is all about realistic continuity. If a guy wants to go to a house from his car naturally and obviously, he'll walk up to it. But this isn't real life. It's a movie and showing a character doing mundane things like walking from point A to point B breaks immersion. First thing to throw aboard is three-dimensional continuity. Don't worry about it. Just get rid of it. Not only will nobody care, they will be happy that you didn't burden the film by making somebody walk up the path to the door just open the door to the car and cut to the inside door as the door opens and we all understand that he whoever it was went from the car into the house hey frank and this space continuity so. takes us to our next rule it's mr grady The 2D plane of screen maintains the continuity of where the characters are situated in a scene. Here the butler is on the right and Jack is on the left. Now imagine a straight line going through the two actors. The rule is that the camera should always be on one side of this line so the audience don't confuse where the characters are standing. Even when the camera jumps to a close up, continuity is not broken as long as you keep on the same side. As soon as you cross the line though, strange and this really can confuse the audience on where the characters are standing in a scene and thus break immersion but even more important than this rule is where the eyes are looking on the screen 
Stacks and stacks of bowling green AOE 11 when we are watching a movie, our eye isn't seeing the entire screen at once, but rather a part of it. So as a filmmaker, if you want to keep the audience engaged, you keep their eyes engaged. And you do this by directing the eyes, telling it where to look next. And if you divide the frame up into quadrants, upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right, and then maybe the center, are they looking there or there or there or there? This continuity could be best maintained by motion. And if you have to cut, cut in a way that the eye is still looking at that part of the screen. I'm looking there, which is the point of the gun. At the moment, the cut, what do I see there? At this point, the three rules we observed all pertain to maintaining logical continuity. Like where are the characters standing in a scene? Where are the characters going? Or what is the audience focusing on? But looking at the percentages, these three are massively dwarfed in comparison to the next three rules. Because there are elements way more important than these nitpicking technicalities. And this is where we begin to unravel the interesting answer we are searching for. There's another country, and I learned it so well that we've hardly spoken for 20 years. Rhythm is the way you combine several shots. So as a whole, it all feels like a constant pleasing motion of sound and images. What do you want to talk about? Hmm? <laughs> Almost like music. And if you get the rhythm wrong, like for example, cutting way too quickly. That is comforting. That's how I am. That's how I roll. That's how I do. <laughs> it feels jarring. Thank you. They're Costco. The rhythm sets a continuity in a way that is gleeful, that just feels good. And frequently, we may need to break this rhythm, no matter how pleasing it is in service of. A single cut is all it takes to tell a story. A single cut and the audience knows. Telling a story visually is so powerful that you don't always need words to convey what's going on. With a single cut, you know what an evil man is planning for his next move. Or convey how much time has passed in a story. Story is important, obviously, but we are still not there yet. The story is still a blend of the most fundamental component, without which there is absolutely no sense in watching a film or even a story in the first place. Telling a story is all about emotion and sometimes it can mean breaking visual continuity to serve the emotion rather than serving technical consistency. That can mean slowing things momentarily for two characters so they share a moment that feels like an eternity even if it's not logically realistic. And it all depends on what you want from the scene. An abrupt end to continuity can emote a gut punch. Or maybe break 2D continuity to make the audience feel unnerved, like a thing you can't really put a finger on. Or maybe show a character's entire trip to a place, because it's a life-changing day he remembers every minute of. 
Megalotti, tu mi capisci, no? Sei italiano, come tu padre? Or maybe slow things way down like a passive bullet in a gun barrel, just waiting. Waiting to kill any unpredictable second. E mettiamo tutto a posto. Steve Saria, si deve finire. But you know what? Fuck the rules. What are rules anyway? Rules can be bended and broken and ignored. You know, fuck the film editing too. Here's a film shot in a single continuous take. Here's a seven hour masterpiece that has people walking for more than half of its runtime. There's nothing films cannot do. And films should be like human emotions. Complex, irrational, unpredictable. Cinema is relatively young and yet it's possibly the deepest and most complex of all art forms. The rules only tell you how to swim in the ocean, an ocean boundless with treasures just waiting to be discovered. All that remains is we dive deeper. And really, that's all that matters. Thank <laughs> you.